Hello everybody! Welcome to another great week here in the month of June. Today is June 20th, 2022. And it's Monday. And I'm Michael J. Burns, pastor, former pastor in Long Island, New York for 35 years. And we're coming to you live on Facebook and we're broadcasting on about six other platforms. And I'm excited about this week's uh, series of broadcasts. Praise God. We're going to be continuing and probably concluding this week our series we've been doing on God's healing word regarding longevity, living a long, a full, and a satisfied life. And so I'm very excited about where we're going to go today. We're talking actually about six things that can lengthen your life. We've already covered three of them. And we're going to get into number four uh, here today. Let me uh, encourage you to visit our website. I'm going to put that information up on the screen today. And I know you'll be glad I did because you'll want to have access to it. You can visit our website at mjbministries.org. And we have a whole bunch of free stuff there. We you can sign up for our upcoming newsletter. On July 1st, we'll be sending out the July e-newsletter. We have almost 600 people that have signed up for it, and we would love to uh, send it to you if you go to our, go to our website and uh, simply sign up for it when the pop-up window comes up or in the bottom right of the website. Uh, we also have free audios. There's links to our YouTube channel with over 200 free videos. We have our free apps, uh, mobile apps, uh, the links for the Google Play and the Apple App Store right there on our website, mjbministries.org. And we even have the archives of our past newsletters that if you were in the Valley of Decision that you could possibly review some of them and see if it's something you'd like to get on a regular basis. We also have our books there that you can get, and we have a bunch of other free uh, things that are there for your enjoyment. Be sure you get our mobile app though, I'm telling you, we have a free Bible there that with 61 English translations. We have ways you can submit prayer requests there. Uh, there's a bunch of other great links and resources that we have on the app that you want to have. Just uh, you know, among the many apps that you probably already have on your smartphone or smart pad or whatever. And I know you'll enjoy it tremendously. Amen. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer before we get into the teaching tonight. Hallelujah to God. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we just thank you right now for the privilege of being your sons and your daughters. We're so glad to be in the family of Almighty God. We're saved, we're sanctified, we're filled with the Holy Ghost, glory to God, and we'll walk in the path of eternal life right now, even while we're still here on the earth. We know that one day we'll spend eternity with you in the new Jerusalem, in the new heaven, and in the new earth. Glory to God. We thank you so very much for all that you're doing for us even now. Jesus said you that he was going away to prepare an abiding place for us. For in his Father's house are many, many dwelling places, many mansions. And I thank you, Lord, for the streets of gold, the gates of pearl. Oh, we just thank you for all the beauty that awaits us in heaven. But while we're waiting to, for our lives on earth to be through or the soon return of Jesus, Father, we want to uh, express to you that we have a sense of deep purpose for our lives here on the earth. And that's why we want to live long. That's why we want to live to a ripe old age. We want to continue to do uh, what we can to expand the family of God and sharing of the gospel, of seeing your power and your glory displayed in the earth. And Father, we thank you to, for tonight's broadcast. It's a, another avenue through which you are going to turn light on in the world. So I'm asking you to think through my 
mind and speak through my lips to the people today. I'm asking you to cause every ear to be listening, every mind to be open, and every heart to be receptive to the things of the Word and of the Holy Spirit of God. And we welcome the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit. We welcome signs, wonders, and miracles into this broadcast tonight, Father God, and even on the rebroadcast. And Father, for everything that will be said, done, revealed, or manifested, we covenant with you now at the beginning, before we even begin to teach uh, and preach, Father God, uh, to give you all the glory, the honor, the praise, and the thanks for it all in Jesus' mighty and precious name. And everybody who agreed with that prayer said, Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord forevermore. We're glory to God forever. I'm excited that you're with me here tonight. I'm Pastor Mike Burns, no longer pastoring, really, but uh, we are uh, in an itinerant traveling ministry, uh, social media, which you're tasting of right now, as well as book writing. You know, I have uh, five books I've written, three are on the market right now, but two are yet to be published, and I really need help getting these two books published. Uh, one is a book on, on healing, how to receive your healing. And uh, another book I just completed, and I'm just tweaking right now on the Devo Life, Seven Essentials for the Christ Follower. I'm very excited about both of these books. But, you know, it takes thousands of dollars to be able to publish these books, and we really can't do it. That means not just publishing them, but printing them as well and making them available to those who are enjoying our ministry on social media and as we travel. And so we're very excited about all that lies ahead of us. And we thank you for your partnership in advance. Now, today, uh, we're going to be talking to you about uh, longevity. Now, you remember that we started by sharing you with you a couple of good scriptures. Uh, one of the scriptures we shared is found in Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 3. Let me just turn it on right now where it says at the end here, this is after Noah got off the ark, that he's, God said that uh, the days of man's years would be uh, three score, I mean, sorry, it would be 120 years. This is where people were living five, six, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred years in, the, in their physical bodies. But God said man's, man's uh, would be judged, just like the flood of Noah judged the earth, and man would only live to be about 120 or less. And so we think that's where we should be. Psalm 90 and verse 10 says that we, sh you know, if our days are 70 or 80 years, if we have strength enough that that's, we have learned to accept that as being what we should live. But really, we should look at this scripture in Genesis 6, 3, and then also in Psalm 91 and verse uh, number 16 very powerful verse. Uh, it tells us in verse 16, with long life, God said, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And so this is God's plan for you and for me to live a long, full, and a satisfied life. Can I get a good hearty amen from somebody here today? Now, we've already covered several things about keys. We're talking about six keys to living uh, a long life. And we've already covered three of them. And I want to show you what they are right now. Number one, we said that in order to live a long life, uh, we have to be a fighter. Now, God wants you not to fight in the flesh, like with uh, guns or knives or other type of weapons, but with spiritual weapons, you have to learn to fight sickness and disease that's trying to take your life. And God wants you to learn to do that. Can you say amen? And then the word of God tells us not only do we need to be a fighter, we saw in there that we have to learn to walk in wisdom, in uh, not only spiritual wisdom, but in practical ways when it comes to rest, when it comes to exercise, when it comes to diet. We can walk in the wisdom of God, and God will give us wisdom on how to live long and strong. And then we talked about uh, the last week about giving honor. And we're talking about how we can give honor to people who are parents, to all authorities, which are government officials, police, firemen, uh, different ones along that line. Now, 
giving honor it, 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 as long as we're not being asked to obey man rather than, obey obey man rather than God. But we certainly shouldn't do that. We should obey God first and foremost. But God has an authority uh, in the in the political in the other realms of life, police and things. And certainly, that while there may be corrupt people in those professions, we, there are many, many that are not. And it's those that we need to give honor uh, to. Also, we saw that we should give honor to pastors and ministers, uh, to our employers or people in general, or people even that work for us. And we spent quite a bit of time talking about uh, those very things. And so we want to encourage you with these, these first three things. But today, I'm going to talk to you about the fourth area whereby we need to experience long life. And this is going to be a really very significant area. So not only be a fighter, not only walk in wisdom, not only learn to give honor to honor's due, but also we saw here uh, the fourth area, and this is what we're going to look at today. We haven't looked at this yet, is the importance of controlling our tongue. Someone say out loud, control your tongue. Point at yourself and tell yourself, say, self, <laughs> control your tongue. And I'm going to tell you, this is probably one of the areas that people have the hardest time controlling is their tongue. And uh, James even said to you and I that it's full of deadly poison, the tongue, and it, it tries to uh, you know, bring about things in our life that we would not want to have. Let me share the scripture from uh, the book of Proverbs. And this is Proverbs chapter 18 and verse number 21. And this is a powerful, powerful verse here. It simply says this, uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Now think about this, death and life are in the power of the tongue. I want you to think about the idea that in your tongue, you hold a special power that God gave you, uh, where that power is, where it could be death or it could be life. And people don't understand that their words are significant. I have my phone right here because it was a, a verse of scripture I didn't put up on the screen, but I want you to look it up in uh, Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 7. And it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and notice he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now listen to this. The Targum Ankelos, an ancient Aramaic translation of this verse here, says this, and man became another speaking spirit. God literally breathed himself into a lump of dirt, glory to God, and man, both male and female, listen to this, uh, became another speaking spirit. And this is a significant thing is that, you know, animals, you know, they can make grunts and sounds. Dogs can bark. Cats can meow. Birds can chirp. I mean, there's all kinds of things. Snakes can hiss. I mean, there's all kinds of things. Animals can growl. All of those are the sounds they make. But only human beings have been given the ability to speak. And God made us, in his image and likeness, a spirit man. And we are speaking spirits living in this house called our body, and our spirit gives voice through the vocal cords, through the breathing, the diaphragm, through the lips and the tongue, and we can articulate words. Now, as you know, words, uh, you know, they, they can take on different forms. You know, when I was a little boy, um, I'm sure you heard the same thing, that sticks and stones may break your bones, but names will never hurt you. Well, the truth of the matter is, that names can hurt you. They can afflict your, your, your self-esteem. They can afflict you in many, many ways. But as I became a Christian and I began to learn from the Bible, principles of the word of God, that words have the power of death and they have the power of life. I began to understand that I could actually use my words to uh, either bless myself or to kill or hurt myself. 
And this is something that you and I need to see. I want to share this verse in the New Living Translation. And, and listen to what it says here. And then we're going to look at the message. It says this, those who love to talk will experience the consequences for the tongue can kill or the tongue can nourish life. This is powerful. And then listen to this from the Amplified Bible, I mean, from the Message Bible. And the message says, words kill, words give life. They're either poison or fruit you choose. Now, let me read that again. Words kill and words give life. They're either poison or fruit. And the Bible tells us that we're the ones that have to choose. Now, think about this. This is really significant right now because you and I have the power of choice when it comes to the words that we're going to use. You know, some people don't realize how they were literally trained uh, growing up in a household, maybe where words were used rather recklessly. But I'm going to say something to you just because that's what the way you were raised Maybe there was profanity, maybe there was negativity, maybe there was fear, maybe there was a belief that was expressed through words. Come on, somebody. You don't have to go down that path in your life and in the course of your life. You can literally make a decision that you're going to change what you're going to say about yourself. You know, uh, today is June the, the 20th, 2022. In about three days... June 23rd, it will be the sixth year anniversary where I began to have, uh, uh, I had four strokes in my cerebellum on the back of the brain. They said the source was my left vertebral artery. Now, I went on to have two more strokes in my occipital in July the 3rd. I had to go back by ambulance. And then, then, on, then on July 30th, I had one stroke in my medulla down by my brainstem. I had seven strokes in three parts of my brain in 2016. Now, most people don't, uh, don't know this, and some do, of course, but I, I opened the door for this by the words I was speaking. The Lord himself, God the Father, actually came to me in the hospital while I was there after the first four strokes. I'd been there all day, all night. The next morning after the doctor came in and told me that it was strokes, not TIAs, not many strokes, but four actual strokes, and the source was my left vertebral artery. We asked him some questions. He then left, my wife left, to call family and church family and let them know what the doctors were saying. And I laid there all by myself feeling as lonely as a person could possibly feel. And God came into my room, his presence, oh, I think God, his presence came in, and he spoke these words to me. He said, son, and it was the most loving thing I'd ever heard in my life when he said, son, I need you to understand that the weight of your words have brought about this consequence that you're experiencing right now. But if you'll take the weight of my word, he was referring to the Bible, and put it in your heart and in your mouth and believe about yourself what I've said about you, you will completely reverse the situation and you'll stand taller than you've ever stood before. Praise God forevermore. You see, I was in the process of losing my home in a foreclosure at that time. I was uh, hating myself. I literally hated myself. I hated the person I was, the man I was, the husband I was, the father I was, the pastor I was. And the enemy, the devil, began to lie to me and tell me all these things about myself that just weren't true according to the Word of God. I was a Christian. I was not only a, a Christian, I was a pastor. And I'd been a pastor for over 30 years at the time of these strokes. But I was living in such a, a state of fighting off depression over the things I had been losing. Come on, somebody. Maybe you've never been there. Maybe you have been there. And I'm just pastors are just as human as anybody else. And even though I knew in my heart of hearts better than this, I was allowing the enemy's consistent uh, words of attack against my mind, because that's the battleground, your mind. He was telling me all these things that were negative about myself. I began to agree with him, and I began to say what he was saying to me about me, and I was starting to say those things about myself. 
Now, let me give you a scripture. I don't have it on the screen to show you, but John 8, 44, maybe I'll have it there tomorrow. I want you to see it. Jesus said to the religious people, you're of your father, talking about the Pharisees, you're of your father, the devil, for uh, the lust of your father, you will do. It says he was a murderer and a liar from the beginning. He was the father of lies and in him abides no truth. And I'm kind of paraphrasing it, but the Lord showed me, he said something there that he was a murderer. And the Lord spoke to me and said, the devil has been murdering my people with his lies. People are accepting his lies and as a result, they're literally, literally turning their authority of the, over their life to the devil through their own words. And he's then taking his ability and assaulting our lives with that. Matthew 28 and verse 18 says that all authority, Jesus said this after his resurrection from the dead, after he appeared to his disciples, he said, all authority is given to me in heaven and in earth. Now listen, if Jesus had all the authority in heaven and the earth, then that means the devil has zero authority. He has no authority whatsoever. Come on, somebody, I'm going to hold up as you can see it. No authority whatsoever, big fat zero. And as a result of that, the way he gets authority is he lies to you, he lies to me, tells us things about ourselves that just isn't true, and we agree with him with our words, and we're literally giving him our authority through which he uses his ability to afflict our bodies. You know, Jesus said in John, in Luke 10, verse 19, he said, uh, behold, I give you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Notice this. Jesus said we have authority over the devil's ability, his power. And so understand that while the devil no longer has authority over people, he does have ability and his goal is to try to get authority from people by lying to them, getting the people to agree with his lies. And through those lies, he uses his ability to afflict them with all kinds of things. And in my case, it was seven strokes in three parts of my brain. But God reversed it because he told me how to reverse it. And I'm telling you what he told me because you can do the same thing I did. And if you'll do it, you can reverse in your life those very same things as well. Can I get a good hearty amen from somebody? I'm telling you, this is the is what happened to me six years ago in just three days when I had those first four strokes in my cerebellum. What should have killed me, God has used it now for the enemy meant for evil. God has turned it for good through my cooperation. And now it's a testimony that's impacting the world. Praise God forevermore. And I want to encourage you with that. Look what the scripture says here in Psalm 34 verses 12 and uh, through 14. Who is the man who desires life? Well, do you desire life? And loves many days that he may see good. Well, if you want to desire life and you want to live many days that you can see good, the Bible says in verse 13 here of Psalm 34, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. The King James says guile. So keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. Now, this is a very, very strong verse here, but I want to show it to you in the Living Bible. This is a paraphrase, but listen to what it says here, and then we're going to have to close for the day. Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? I don't know. Is there anybody out there today that would say, Pastor Mike, I want to live a long and I want to live a prosperous life? Come on, somebody. Well, if that's you then I'm telling you right now, you can begin to live that kind of a life. Then it says in verse 13 in the Living Bible, then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Now, what lies is he talking about? He's talking about speaking the lies of the devil about you. Don't talk about his lies. Don't say what he's saying about you. You're going to die. No, you're not going to die. Psalm 118 verse 17 says, you're going to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. 
Now, when we come back tomorrow, we're going to talk a lot more uh, on this subject because there's just so many things that we can say uh, about this. And I want you to bear with me. Glory to God, tomorrow at 9 p.m. we'll be back on the air. Before we go today, I want you to take advantage of these offers here. My book, Discover the Life You Were Born to Live. It's the first book I wrote, but it's a tremendous 230-page book. It's available as a digital download, or you can order a copy from our website, uh, mjbministries.org, under resources there, or you can go to churchhappensbook.com, and you can find that book there to order as well. Now, I want to tell you, under the name churchhappensbook.com, I also have my book, Church Happens. This is what every pastor needs from the people they lead. And I wrote this book for pastors. I want to send a free copy of this book to every pastor who's watching me today. And if you request this book, glory to God, then uh, I will say, and then you go to churchhappensbook.com, you'll see a tab there under the book that says, I'm a pastor. Click that tab, tap on that tab, fill in your name and email address, and I'll send you a PDF copy of the book Church Happens in its entirety, along with book ordering discount information. And I know you're, you're not going to want to miss out on that. Now, I want to tell pastors especially about a special Saturday seminar when I travel and minister in churches. On Saturdays, I, I hold a seminar uh, that people have to register for. It's a four-hour seminar on Saturday mornings. We have breaks in between, but we also have these two books. My book, Discover the Life You're Born to Live, and I wrote a separate companion study guide of Discover the Life. Each chapter of the study guide cor corresponds with each chapter of the book, and it has questions that are multiple choice, true and false, fill in the blanks, and it is a book that helps the pro people engage the process of discovering the life they were born to live in Christ. And I want to do this. The, the seminar costs $30 per person. It's $25 for the two books and $5 that we collect for the lunch that we do have there. We give to the host church who uses that money to provide the lunch for those who attend. And so I want to make sure that you're going to be able to get, your, get us to come for that. Go to mjbministries.org forward slash invite and fill out that form and then submit it. We'll be in contact with you. Now, I also want to come for the seminar on Saturday. I would prefer to stay on, over on Sunday morning and minister in your morning services. And then if possible, if you're willing for it, to host a miracle and healing rally on Sunday night, go over to God. And it could be early on Sunday, around six or seven o'clock in the evening. And I'm telling you, we will have signs, wonders, and miracles. I've been involved in ministry over 40 years. My wife and I have a combined over 80 years of ministry experience, and we really want to come and share from that wealth of experience with your church. Would you have us come? I believe you will. Glory to God. Also, I want to tell you about our live praise and worship album. It's available only as a digital download uh, from uh, from uh, uh, iTunes or other digital musical platforms. Search for Let Your Glory Fill This House by Michael J. Burns. This is a live recording. We recorded it live in Long Island, New York years ago. And this has all original songs with a live congregation. You will not want to miss out on it. Listen to the samples there on iTunes or wherever you get your digital music and then make the investment of buying this album. As I say, it's only available digitally. We don't have it available any longer on CD or cassette, which we used to have, but now it's only available as a digital download. And I pray that you'll take advantage of that in the name of Jesus. Well, I love you so much. It's so good to be with you here today, and we'll see you tomorrow on Tuesday on June 21st at 9 p.m. Central Time. I love you. You have a wonderful and a blessed day in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God.